It's your butt. Having a little trouble keeping up with the gang? I gotta talk. You what? Boss, I gotta talk. You gotta talk to who? You. Don't you hear well? What were you told? I just want to talk for you a minute. You don't talk on a road. We got a contract with the county to finish this road on time. And you wouldn't want to see us default on that contract now, would you? Pay penalties? No, boss. You start swinging that thing before I put it through your foot. Yes, boss. I always like to talk to the new men myself so they get the message exactly. Understand? Yes, Captain, I understand. My first feeling about you was that you were going to be a troublemaker. But as soon as you saw the light, you settled down real fast. Well, man with no calluses on his hands, you did real well, Ewing. This little old 10-year sentence going to be over with before you know it. Captain. I don't like to be interrupted. I didn't have a fair trial, Captain. I didn't even have a lawyer. You ain't telling me nothing new, boy. Every man in here has complained about that. Captain, I need your help. Why? You need somebody to help you get dressed? You need somebody to sing you a lullaby before you go to sleep? Well, Captain, there, there was almost $2,000 in my billfold when I was arrested, and uh, I'd be more than willing to donate that to your favorite charity if you'd just let me make one telephone call to my family. You ain't. There was no money in your billfold. There was no credit card in your billfold. There was no ID in your billfold, and there was no billfold. Now, what you got here is a 10-year sentence for rape. And I don't like your attitude. Captain, sooner or later, my family is going to backtrack, and they're going to find me. No. Nobody's going to find you. Nobody is going to know that you're here. You are going to have contact with no one. This is your world, and I am your only God. I don't think that's what you You got 10 years, and you're going to serve every minute of it. Now get this dirt out of my sight. It's about as private as it gets. Uh, you, uh, you know who I am. You're a prisoner with a big mouth and 10 years to serve. <laughs> well, no, I'm, I'm a little more than that. I happen to be a very, very wealthy Texas oil man. I live in Dallas, and I could set you up in your own business, and you could make, hell, fifty, hundred thousand dollars $100,000 a year if you wanted to. Doing what? Anything you wanted to. What do you do best? Take care of dumb prisoners like you. <laughs> well, we could change that. All you'd have to do is call my brother Bobby, and he'd come down here with more money than, than you ever thought of. I'll get money if I just call your brother? Yeah, that's right. It's not a bad deal. Are you calling? Well, as you can see, we don't have no phone around here. No, but I'm sure they got one back to prison. Let me see what I can do later. Right now, you go on and eat. Yes, thanks. I really do love him. We love you, honey. But what he done to you was wrong. He just like all them other outsiders. They treat us like we from some foreign country. Well, this is one ain't gonna get away with it. What if I'm pregnant? Ain't time enough for you to know. Yeah, but what if I am? You want that little baby to grow up knowing that his uncles kill his daddy? You're my brothers, and I love you, but you lose me forever if you do that. <laughs> 